Okay. So, before going for this uh, this theorem, Hannibal theorem, Vesta's theorem, we require one or two lemmas, which will be needed in the proof of these lizards. Uh, we have seen already proved the following theorem that if if i n where the i n is say close interval a n b n uh, is a sequence of is a sequence of intervals in R 1 that is real line interval of the real line close interval real lines such that such that they are of decreasing nature such that i n covers i n plus 1 and so on for n is 1 to 3 and so on then the intersection of i n when n is 1 to infinity countable intersection of i n is non empty this result we have seen now extending this results we have we can extend this result to r k space let k be a positive integer positive integers if i n sequence i n b is a sequence of is a sequence of k cells is a sequence of k cells cells such that i n covers i n plus 1 for n is say 1 to 3 and so on then the countable intersection of these cells 1 to infinity i n is not empty so the proof runs on the similar line as we have done it what we will do is we will fix up say j each i n j we can take it uh, the for fix j and apply this one okay this proof we will get the result so i am just dropping what we are interested which is important part here that each or every k cell k cell is compact every k cell is compact so one cell means close interval two cell is a rectangle close rectangle of course and third cell four cell and like this so every k cell is compact so let's see the proof of this first suppose i be a let i be a k cell consisting of all points all points of the type say x 1 x 2 say x x x 1 x 2 x k x 1 x 2 x k such that the x j lies between the bond a j less than equal to v j j is 1 to k let this be a k cell so here this is our set k is 2 so it is in i 2 uh, and this uh, i in, uh, in 2 cell means it is in uh, uh, k is equal to 2 so we are having the cell uh, like this we have the x 1 vary from a 1 to b 1 while the x 2 vary from a 2 to b 2 a 2 to b 2 say this is our here so here this is x 1 this is x 1 ok so this will vary uh, from a 1 to b 1 and here is x 2 which vary from a 2 to b 2 uh, this is our okay this one so this is the case uh, uh, a cell in r2 space
in the R2 space, this is in R2 space like this. Now, what he says is if in general if I take a K cell, then I B suppose K cell in that case it is uh, of the uh, it will contain all the points of the type x 1 x 2 x k where the each x j will lie between this x 1 will lie between a 1 b 1 x 2 will lie between a 2 b 2 x k will lie between a k b k. So, this will ok. Now, let us suppose the distance between that is delta let delta b sigma b j minus a j whole square j is 1 to k under root this is our. So, if you look this one this is the same as what? So, b 1 minus a 1 square plus b 2 minus a 2 whole square. Okay. So, this will be the same as if I picked up the two point x and y in this set x and by x is say x 1 x 2 by is say y 1 by 2. If we picked up two points then the distance between x and y in this R 2 space topology will remain less than this number. So, obviously, then distance between x by in R k space that is we are denoting by same x mod of x minus y will be less than equal to delta when if x belongs to i y belongs to i. So, x is x 1 x 2 x n y is y 1 y 2 y n. Okay. We wanted to show this i is compact. So, assume that let us suppose i is not compact suppose uh, that suppose that i the k cell i is not compact. It means that <laughs> out of open cover of this any open cover if I choose then it cannot have a finite sub cover. So, that is that is there exist there exist an open cover. say g alpha of open sets open cover of i which contains which contains no finite sub cover no finite sub cover that is the meaning of this if it is not uh, uh, compact. So, uh, Finite sub cover. So, let us suppose this is our say here is a i, this is b i, and here is somewhere x i. This is our say another uh, point. So, when you take choose, uh, let us take cover, let, uh, let us pick up c j as a point c j which is a j plus b j by 2. Okay. It means c 1 I am taking as a 1 plus b 1 by 2, c 2 I am taking as a 2 plus b 2. So, if suppose this is in R 2 space, here this is a 1, this is b 1, here is a 2, this is b 2 and this basically we have this uh, uh, this is our rect i interval. So, what we are doing we are taking a point here uh, which is the point c 1 c 2 c 1 comma c 2 c 1 is the middle point of this c 2. So, once you take the point it will divide this whole i in R 2 in 4 parts. This will be a one cell the another cell like this. Okay. So, by choosing this way by choosing uh, c j we can get then then the interval the intervals intervals a j 
cj and the uh, then the interval s is cj and the interval cj cj comma bj these intervals uh, will determine the cell will determine will determine 2k k cells k cells suppose q1 k cells q1 whose union whose union is i this is what yeah, okay just like in case of r2 i i fricta that if you take this uh, interval c1 c2 so a i a 1 c 1 then c 1 b 1 similarly here we get c 1 b 2 c 2 b 2 and like this. So, we get the full interval 2 to the power 2 that is 4 k cells we get it here. It, now, if i is not uh, compact then at least one of the cell will not be covered by a finite will not be compact that is open cover of one of the cell will not have a finite cover there will exist an open cover of one of the cells. Okay. So, at least one of them in here. So, what is since i is not compact since i is not compact is not compact. So, so at least so at least at least one of these sets sets q 1 say call it i 1 cannot cannot be covered by any finite sub collection. any finite sub collection of the open cover g alpha g alpha otherwise if it is so then i 1 will be compact and contradicts to i. Okay. So, that will be next up now picked up now i 1 now pick up i 1 now and again divide again subdivide this i 1 in a similar way as defined earlier and continue this process. So, when you divide again you are getting i 1 1 say or i 2 is one of the cell which is not covered by any finite sub collection. So, again i 2 you again subdivide it and like this. So, continue this process. So, when you continue this process then we obtain continue then we obtained in this process we obtain a sequence <laughs> say i n with the following properties with the following properties. The first is this i's which you are getting cell will be satisfy this inequality i is covers i 1 covers i 2 and so on they are of decreasing nature. Then second is that i n is not covered i n is not covered i n is not covered by any i n is not covered by any finite sub collection sub collection of the cover g alpha and third is that if x is a point in i n and y is also in i n then the distance of this x y in 
r k that is mod of x minus y over i n this is over i n of course in i n which is in r k uh, this distance will be less than or equal to 2 to the power n minus n into delta because here <laughs> if this length is divided then what you are getting this is the one fourth basically when n is 2 you are getting the half um, uh, 1 by delta by 2 delta by 2 and so on n is 3 and like this. So, this will be divided by this i 1 i 2 and so on. Okay. Now, what is 1? 1 says so obviously 1 will here now 1 will imply because they are of decreasing nature and any finite sub collection of this will be non empty. So, the intersection of this will be non empty. So, by thus there is there is a point x star which lies which lies in every i n in every i n. This follows from the results which we have already proved that if i 1 covers i 2 covers i n and if any finite collection of this that is intersection of this will be non empty just now we have seen that i n s. Okay. Second one is so if i x star belongs to some i n. So, i n is a sub is a in k cell is part of the k cell. So, we can find some alpha. So, for some alpha alpha x star this will belongs to the one of the element for some element of the open cover say g alpha because we have taken g alpha as a open cover of the i. So, this x star will belongs to some of the g alpha for some alpha ok well, alpha, but g alpha is open. So, this star will be have as an integer point. So, we can find out a neighbor around the point which is totally contained in this. So, there exists an r greater than 0 such that such that the distance y minus x star is less than r will imply r is in g alpha that is just an integer point that is nothing. Now, r is our own choice. So, let us pick up n let n is so large such that this 2 to the power minus n delta is less than r that is possible because r is 1 c fixed you can take n such a large so that this entire thing remains less than alpha. So, if it is so then what happen this implies that by which you are choosing they basically is in uh, our i n also because i n is satisfy this condition that if x belongs to y n then this is 2 and this is less than r. So, any element of i n will be the element of r. So, this implies that the distance y minus x star is less than or equal to 2 to the power minus delta which implies that the element y which is in g alpha belongs to uh, i n which is subset of g alpha. So, every element of y n i n will be in g alpha for some large n for some which therefore, for large n or so for particular n i n is contained in the set g alpha. So, once it contained in g alpha then i n is covered by g alpha that is i n is covered by g alpha which contradicts the second part of it. What is the second part says i n is not covered by any finite sub collection, but it is covered by the g alpha that is a finite sub collection g alpha. So, contradiction and this contradiction is because of a wrong assumption that i is not compact. So, this so therefore, i is compact. 
<coughs> so this proves the result means every k cell is a compressor in particular every closed interval is a uh, in that is a compact set because that is also now this gives a very interesting result which we call it as a hand bole thor hand a bore thor okay but basically this theorem says uh, uh, that uh, the statement of the theorem let it be the theorem is uh, any value theorem is if we a subset k a subset k of r subset k of r is compact if and only if if and only if it is closed and bounded is closed and bounded so this is a particular when you are choosing r space so in general r k space we will prove some results so as a particular case we can say uh, drive the hand wheeler result so the result is first <laughs> that is important the proof of this the proof follows from the theorem from the next theorem what is this theorem is the theorem says that if a set e in rk if a set e in rk in rk has one of the following one of the following three properties has one of the following three properties properties then then it has the other two that is all three are equivalent that is the following three conditions are equivalent in the space r k. So, in particular when k is 1 it is also true in case of uh, over the real line. What is the condition is the condition says E is closed E is closed and bounded. Second condition shows that E is compact third condition tells every infinite every infinite subset of e has a limit point as a limit point in e so this thing the proof of this so obviously if it is true then in case of alban if E is compact, then it is closed and bounded and vice versa. So, the result follows immediately. Hand and Bolo theorem follows immediately. So, let us see the proof. Suppose A holds, A holds, it means given E is closed and bounded, but we want to E is compact, okay. Uh, that is, E is closed and bounded. So, once it is bounded, it means it will be enclosed by some cell. So, let uh, so E is contained in I for some K cell, K cell I. Okay. But what is E? E is closed, but E is closed and I is compact that we already shown. 
so every closed subset of a compact set is compact so and we know that every closed every closed this result we have every k is compact and every uh, closed and compact sets are compact so this is what we have proved earlier closed subset of a compact sets are compact we know that every closed subset of a compact set is compact this we have already proved so here e is closed i is compact so e is subset of a compact set therefore this implies e is compact so once it implies means therefore a implies b holds okay now suppose b is true suppose b is true then given suppose b holds b holds then uh, automatically c implies why because b is means e is compact that is e is compact so take a sequence any sequence of the subsets of e this we result already proved that if e is an infinite subset of a compact set then he has a limit point a and we have shown earlier that uh, if e e is an infinite infinite subset of a non empty compact of non empty compact sets k then e has then e has a limit point in k limit point limit point in k this we have shown so here e is compact already given we want it that every infinite subset of e has a limit point in e so it what it shows is if uh, this infinite subset of e if i choose and infinite subset of e means we can have it infinite subset non empty compact subsets of k then this will have a limit point in e so obviously b implies c so that's nothing to prove is this now to show c implies a this we prove by contradiction so <laughs> <coughs> given that every infinite subset of e has a limit point in e okay so c is given that is every infinite subset of e has a limit point has a limit point in e this is given okay so we wanted to prove a is closed e is closed in boundary but suppose but e is not closed uh, not bounded let it see first not bounded it means if it is not bounded it means there will be a sequence of the points in e which can whose bound will go uh, to infinity means each x1 x2 xn will be there such that mod of xn will be greater than any arbitrary number n so we get then e contains e contains the points xn with the property that mod of xn is greater than n when n is 1 2 3 and so on x1 will go greater than 1 x2 greater so the limit of this xn will not exist so let s be the set of all such xn such that x n uh, such that x n is greater the mod of x n is greater than n then obviously this is an infinite set is infinite set because if it is finite then we cannot we can get the bound for x n so it is an infinite set and clearly it has no limit point and has no limit point 
limit point in R k. This is the set we are choosing in R s consider. So, once it is so it has no hence has none in E and and hence not in none in E. Mean this sequence will not have any limit point in E also. Okay, that's one thing. Okay, thus is one. So, but what is this? This contradicts the which contradicts contradicts C because C says that if you take any infinite subset of E, it must have a limit point in e. S is an infinite subset of E, but it does not have a limit point in C. So, contradicts this implies that. E is closed. Again, to show E is bounded, so support further assume C holds assume C holds, but E is not closed. It means the limit point of the E, all the limits points is not in E. So, thus we can get the limit point, then there is a point, then there is a point, say uh, there is a point, suppose x naught belongs to R k, which is a limit point of E, which is a limit point of E. But, but uh, which is limit, but not a point of, but does not belongs to, does not belong to E, because all the limits point does not belongs to E, because E is not closed. So, if it is not, then we can get this uh, uh, sequence of the points in E, that is, so the set X n belongs to E, such that mod X n minus X naught can be made less than say 1 by n. This collection will be there, is it not? So, set of all points E which satisfy this kind, some a sequence will be obtained via this. Now, let us find S be the set of those points. Let S be the set of those points of each which satisfy this condition. Okay? We claim that S cannot has x naught as a limit. Uh, S has no other limit point, S has no other limit points. Uh, S with uh, no other limit point except X naught because, because if suppose by is another point of this, suppose because suppose if y belongs to R k and y is different from x naught is a limit point is a limit point suppose then we get then the distance between x n minus y because uh, uh, if y is a, uh, then the limit point we will just go because suppose y is another point which is different from x, then we can say x n by n is greater than equal to x naught minus y minus x n minus x naught. That's why, but x naught minus y because x naught and y naught is different, so we can just put it as it is x naught minus y. Now x n minus x naught is less than, so minus of this is greater than minus. Now n we can choose in such a way so that the whole thing. Uh, this is greater or equal to the whole thing is greater than or equal to half of this. Now, y and x are different, so this is fixed point. It means that this as n tends to infinity, x n does not go to y. So, this implies the limit of x n is not y. So, it cannot have a point other than x naught as a limit point. But x naught is a point which does not belongs to our set E. So, this sort by is not a limit point of any, thus it has a no limit point in E. Thus, S has no limit because x naught is in not in E. 
So, x s has no limit point, no limit point uh, in E, hence contradicts our assumption 3, which contradicts C. Therefore, our E is closed. So, equivalence of 1 and 2 will implies the Hannibal theorem. B will imply Hannibal theorem. That's the proof for the Hannibal theorem can go. Okay. <coughs> now here we put some remark. The remark say that in an arbitrary metric space. Uh, in an arbitrary metric space, metric space x d, the conditions b and c are equivalent. B and C, but but A does not. It means in general uh, B and C A does not imply, but A does not imply B and C in general. It means for arbitrary metric space the compact set and the infinite subset of E has a limit point are equivalent, but if a set E is bounded and closed, then you cannot say whether it remains compact or it will have a finite infinite subset of E will have a limit point in E. It's not may not be true. For example, if suppose I take X as a Hilbert is, uh, L2 space, L2 space, L2 space means set of those sequences A n such that sigma mod a n square 1 to infinity is finite in L 2 space. And if I take the sequence e n a 0 0 0 1 0 0, this is the points belonging to L 2 space. Now, if we take the norm of e n, now here norm of this, if suppose this I denote by a, then norm of a, uh, of course, this is a case of functional analysis, but uh, I will, uh, so we are not much uh, uh, going in detail, but this is the norm. So, norm of E n is 1 for each n. Therefore, E 1, E 2, E n this set is there, E 1, E 2, E n and so on. Then each point, each point having norm 1, is not, so it is bounded, so S is bounded and none of the point is a limit point, no point is a limit point because it is a point set only limit point of S. Therefore, we can say all the limits points of S belongs to S. So, this shows X is closed also. So, it is a closed angle, but it is an infinite set. So, we cannot cover it by means of a finite sub cover, but S cannot be covered by finite open sets say g alpha out of out of open cover g alpha means any open cover here we cannot choose the finite cover which come because it is infinite so it is not compact it is not compact so this sort contradicts our okay so that's what we are not uh, going detail for this because it's a uh, part of the functional analysis. The next result which we say is the Westras theorem. The theorem says every bounded, every bounded infinite subset. infinite subset 
of R k. Every bounded infinite subset of R k has a limit point in R k. In R k, the proof is very easy. <coughs> Since E every bounded infinite subset say E of R k has since E is bounded which is infinite also set is a subset. So, E is a subset of of a k cell k cell i which is contained in R k because it bounded means it will covered by some k cell. Okay. But, what is the uh, earlier theorem says that every k cell is uh, uh, compact, but every k cell is compact therefore, I is compact. So, E which is contained in I which is a compact set okay. and what this uh, result says the one result which we have already shown that that every if you choose a infinite subset of a compact set then he has a limit point in k. So, every infinite subset of compact set. So, if if E is an infinite set of a compact set infinite set of a compact set uh, of a compact set k then E has a limit point in k this we know, but we know this result. So, using this implies that our Vesta's term the proof of the best term. Because Vesta theorem, we wanted to prove a, a infinite bounded infinite subset of A has a limit point on all K. So, this completes the proof of this. Okay. Now, we have one more concept of uh, set which comes in the tail is the connected set. Okay. So, let us define connected set. So, first we have a separated set separated sets. Okay. Two subsets, two subsets A and B of a metric space of a metric space capital X are set to be are said to be separated if both A intersection B closure and A closure intersection B are empty set. Are empty sets are empty set. It means that is that is if no point no point of A if no point of A lies in lies in the closure of of B and no point of B no point of B lies in the closure of A. Closure of A. Okay. Then we say these two sets are separate. It means this is the one set A, and here is another set B. Okay, B. Not this one. Now, if I take the 
limit points of A, all the point of A, then it should not belongs to the closure of B. And if we take any point of B, all its limit point, if it does not belongs to A, then we say A and B are separated. For example, if I take this uh, set, say uh, uh, 0 1 and 0 1, suppose I take the set 0 1, B is the set say 1 2, if I look this. So, this is the 0 1 and here it is 1 2, this is 1 2, this is. Now, if we look what is the closure of B, the closure of B is this. So, this is our 0 1 is the set A and when you take this then it becomes B 2 that is the closure of B bar, B bar which includes 1 and open at 2, but 1 is a point which belongs to only B bar does not belongs to A. So, I neither the point of B nor its limit point belongs to A. Similarly, if we take the others say this is 0 and 1, this is the closure of this and the open sets this one is 0 to 1 to 1 to is our B. So, A bar intersection B is empty and A bar intersection B is empty. Then here A bar A intersection B bar is also empty. So, A and B are separated set. Okay. There is a difference between the disjoint set and separate one. Uh, separated set of course, are disjoint, but the disjoint set may not be separated. Uh, separated set, separated sets are of disjoint are, are of course, disjoint set are of course, disjoint, but disjoint set disjoint sets need not be need not be separated. For example, <coughs> if we look that interval 1 to A is the set, suppose I take the interval close interval 0 1 and B is a set which is an open interval 1 2. Now, A and B are disjoint, A intersection B is empty. So, this implies A and B, A and B, A and B are disjoint, disjoint, but A bar intersection B is not empty. A bar intersection B because <coughs> no, no A bar uh, A intersection B bar sorry A, A bar B A intersection B bar is not empty because when you take the closure of this 1 is the limit point 2 is also limit point. So, intersection will include 1 <coughs> while the separate set said if both these are empty set. So, here at least this is not empty. So, this shows A and B are not separated. Okay. Now, we have defined the connected set now. A set E, which is subset of X, is set to be is said to be connected, is said to be connected if E is E is not a union of two union of two non empty union of the two not a, a union of two 
non empty separate set separate sets ok so this is now one result we have in this uh, uh, connectedness over layer line what he says is a subset e a subset e of the real line of the real line r1 is connected is connected if and only if if and only if uh, it has the following property following property the property says if x if x belongs to e y belongs to e and x is less than z less than y then z is also in e the proof is very simple so you just i will just give the outlines if there exist suppose if there exist a point z if there exists x belongs to e y belongs to e and some z belonging to the interval x y such that z is not in e then we will reach a contradiction then uh, then e can be expressed as the union of this set where a z is the set of e intersection minus infinity z b z is the e intersection z infinity ok. Uh, so, since x and y are in way since x belongs to a because it is in e and y belongs to b and a and b are non empty and a and b are non empty non empty or non -empty. since this is an all non empty then is since a is the a z which is subset of minus infinity z and b z which is subset of z infinity therefore these are two separate set then obviously a z and b z are separated are separated. So, once they are separated then E cannot be connected cannot be connected set because E is the union of these two sets. So, it is not a so contradiction therefore, this result may not be true this I will conversely if suppose uh, E is not connected E is not connected then uh, there are non empty separated set separated sets a and b such that their union a and union b is e now picked up x and y now pick pick up x belongs to a y belongs to b and let z is the supremum value of a intersection this closed set x y. Now, obviously, this set a uh, obviously clearly x belongs to the a closure uh, x closure and hence and hence this z sorry z belongs to a closure and this z cannot belongs to b ok. So, what we get in fact, so therefore, x may be less than equal to z and strictly less than y. Now, if z does not belongs to a then in case then we have x less than z less than y and z is not in e. If z belongs to a then we have 
z is not in B. So, we get there exists a z 1 belongs to uh, does not belongs to E, but such that z 1 uh, there exists a z 1 such that z x less than z 1 less than by and z 1 is not in B. Therefore, x less than z 1 less than by and this implies that z 1 is not in by and z 1 is not in by. So, this completes the proof. Okay. I think thank you very much.